If an officer stops you, always be polite and never ever run away. Promise, Mama, you'll keep your hands inside. Is it a gun? Is it a knife? Is it a wallet? This is your life. It ain't no secret. It ain't no secret. No secret, my friend. You can get killed just for living in your American skin. Oh. I just want to know, where do we go from here? My grandchildren are white because they are the grandchildren of a former president and secretary of state. Let's be honest here. They won't face the kind of fear that we heard from the young children testifying before the city council. Being stronger together with this common vision means rejecting those forces that try to pit us against each other. And that starts with being honest being unafraid to face the facts. Bill told me that she was going out there, she and a group of women, and she would be a part of a witch's church. Now, make no mistake, this is not easy work. We've been doing this since Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. But it is righteous work. Protecting all of God's children is America's calling. Remember what scripture also tells us. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Come on, give God praise for Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton. Amen. 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 Anybody glad you came to church today? I'm glad you came too. But first, never before seen video of Hillary Clinton inside the Walmart empire. She is probably one of the most investigative politicians in American history. And this morning you know, you're going to see her in a way you've never seen her before, America, serving on the board of Walmart. Her. ABC News what Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross is here with details on this. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Robin. Although she makes no mention of it in her official biography, Hillary Clinton served for six years on the board of Walmart the huge retailer criticized by many for its treatment of workers and its strident opposition to unions. Just how strident can be seen in videotapes ABC News has obtained from the archives of a production company hired by Walmart to record its meetings, now providing a rare clips inside the company and a very corporate Hillary Clinton. Walmart's opposition to unions was led for decades by labor lawyer John Tate, who after his retirement proudly recalled at this company meeting in 2004 what he said was his favorite phrase. Labor unions are nothing but blood-sucking parasites living off of the productive labor of people who work for a living. 
Hillary Clinton was not present at this Walmart meeting, but Tate was relied on for years to keep unions out at Walmart, including during the six years from 1986 to 92, when Clinton was on the Walmart board and Tate was either an executive or a member of the board himself. Clinton has since denounced Walmart policies, but at this 1990 stockholders meeting, she seemed to be very much the loyal company woman. You know, as a shareholder and director of our company, I'm always proud of Walmart and what we do and the way we do it better than anybody else. But 20 years later, critics say Walmart still lags in promoting women to top jobs. And the company is now defending itself in a discrimination lawsuit brought by one and a half million current and former female employees. I don't doubt the sincerity of her efforts, but we don't see a lot of evidence that, that conditions for women at Walmart changed much during the late 1980s or early 1990s. As the wife of the then governor of Arkansas, Clinton also took a role in supporting a Buy America program to create American jobs. One of the reasons we want to buy America is because we love America. But as I reported at the time for NBC News in 1992, Walmart continued to get most of its products from overseas during its Buy America program, including from this factory in Bangladesh that used 11 and 12 year old girls. Some of the foreign made clothing was later found to be sold under Made in America signs in Walmart stores. Made in Korea, made in China. All at a time that Hillary Clinton served on the Walmart board. Now how anybody can lose a dollar, let alone a billion dollars, in the casino industry is kind of beyond me, right? And it, it's just hard to figure. But as a result, it doesn't look like he paid a dime of federal income tax for almost two decades. Now, while millions of American families, including mine and yours, were working hard, paying our fair share, it seems he was contributing nothing to our nation. Imagine that. Not fair, nothing for Pell Grants to help kids go to college, nothing for veterans, Nothing for our military. Megan, aside from being the former chair of the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign manager, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe also served as a board member of the Clinton Global Initiative, founded by former President Bill Clinton. Records show more than 100 donors contributed to both the foundation and McAuliffe's 2013 gubernatorial campaign. And now Fox News has confirmed the FBI and Department of Justice are taking a close look at those overlaps, especially a $120,000 contribution from Chinese businessman and politician Wang Wenliang. The contribution was made through his U.S. businesses. U.S. election law, though, prohibits foreign nationals from donating to U.S. political campaigns. Wenliang is a delegate for China's ceremonial legislature, but he also reportedly holds permanent resident status here in the U.S. Investigation breaking yesterday. Let's listen to what he's saying. Well, as I say, there's no allegations of wrongdoing. They're entitled to do an investigation. Uh, as I say, it relates to this donor, a valid donor, uh, had been a green card holder since 2007. And, um, you know, we fully vetted him. Were you aware of these allegations prior to the report yesterday? No. <laughs> 
Did you use your position in the Clinton Foundation to solicit both donations for the foundation as well as for your political organization and your campaign? Oh, I didn't bring the donor in. Uh, no, oh, in general. There were more than 100 donors oh. that donated to both the Clinton Foundation as well as your campaign. Uh, I think we travel in the same circles. I've traveled the globe with President Clinton, and we have a lot of the same friends. Those that give the Clinton Foundation have been friends of mine for years and years. I mean, we've friendship together. We're getting word that Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks guy, that he has another October surprise, and it's going to go down tomorrow. He was originally going to come out with some information on Hillary Clinton out on a balcony, and he's canceled that because of some, some security concerns, death threats. Now he says he's coming out with a video announcement tomorrow. But sure enough, they tweeted out about an hour ago that it's going to be 9.30, 10 o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time, Tuesday. That's basically 3 a.m. our time. We're going to have a live feed tonight starting in around, I'd say, 2.30 in the morning or so. And it's going to run through right through until the early morning hours, actually, we were here live covering it last night with the crew. He said, you don't think I'm going to release something at 3 a.m., do you? No, I just implied that and said that all over the news for months since June. He said, I'll release the data rolling out by the end of the year. That's what he said. He did not say he'd release it before the election. He also said he was not plotting to bring down Hillary. Really, he'd been saying she needed to be brought down, that she was a, quote, demon, wanted to put the media's neck in a noose. If Assange thinks he trolled the Internet, he thinks he trolled new media, he thinks he trolled Trump supporters, as the left is celebrating today in hundreds of publications I saw this morning, making fun of yours truly and others, are inept. I mean, I always overestimate how smart people are, over and over again in my life, and it's, it's, it's one of my biggest problems, is I think people are smart, like the folks I associate with, and quite frankly, like I am. Uh. Hillary Clinton is speaking to reporters now in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. She's slamming Donald Trump's comments yesterday on veterans with post-traumatic stress. Let's listen in. Hi, Secretary. Hi. Um, Julian Assange this morning said he plans to release documents in the next 35 <clears throat> days that could um, affect the U.S. election. Are you worried that there's anything that could come out that would upend the race? And related to that, there's a report going around that you joked once about Assange, can't we just drone the guy? Did you ever joke about droning Assange? Well, I, I, I don't know anything about what he's talking about, and uh, I don't recall any joke. Um, it, well, I, I, I don't know anything about what he's talking about. Joke about droning Assange. Well, I, I, I don't know anything about what he's talking about.
joke about droning us on. Well, I, I, I don't know anything about what he's talking about, and uh, I don't recall any joke. Um, it would have been a joke if it uh, had been said, but I don't recall that. Okay, thank you all very much. Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? Did, did Jennifer leave? Thank you all. Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? Did, did Jennifer leave? Huma says, quote, Have you been going over her calls with her so she knows the Indian Prime Minister is at eight? The aide replies, she was in bed for a nap by the time I heard she had an 8 a.m. call. We'll go over with her. Huma replied, it's very important to do that. She's often confused. Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? Did, did Jennifer move? About health care. We need to make what we've got work really well and improve it and get the costs out of a upward spiral of... A upward spiral. And she short-circuited. She used the term short-circuited. She took a little short circuit in the brain and she's got problems. She's got a problem. Secretary Clinton. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Woo! Okay. You guys have got to try the cold chai. <laughs> Secretary Clinton. Woo! Okay. Let's, um, let, let's. And she's got problems. She's got a problem. Uh, they had to quickly call her motorcade to come up and pick up. Uh, Hillary Clinton because they weren't expecting her to leave at that hour. She was apparently having some medical problems. Hi. Hello. How are oh, you? hello, Madam Secretary. Thank, Thank you so you, much Serena. for meeting with ABC Action oh, News. Nice we really you. appreciate it. What's your first name? Serena. Serena. It's so nice to meet you. And look, I brought that picture of your husband. My brother operated on um, your aide, one of your aides. He's a neurosurgeon. He's a neurosurgeon. My brother operated on um, your aide, one of your aides. He's a neurosurgeon. He's a neurosurgeon. I think you were at that event. So, actually, <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. I know you're very busy. Where do you guys want me to stand? Um, I think right here. Great, perfect. We enjoyed your speech. Very passionate, as always. Thank you. Let me watch it. How long have you been uh, in broadcast? I have been in broadcast now for 21 years. You are kidding me. Yeah, 21 years. Holy mm -hmm. moly, you started young. <laughs> I don't back there. Oh, this is Tim Jones. He, I call him the Porsche of the newsroom because he is the best photographer that we have. Excellent. So we, again, really appreciate your time. Absolutely. And I know you're very busy. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'll just start with, I'll start with my questions. Last week, you were remembering 9-11. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about your health for a moment. Mm -hmm. It was startling to many Americans to see you get into, the, into that van. I certainly hope 
you're feeling oh, much better. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you that I know that you provided documents from mm -hmm. your doctor saying mm -hmm. that you are fit to be the President of right. the United States. Right. Some doctors have said, because of your age, as well as your opponent's age, that you could be at higher risk for dementia or even Alzheimer's and have suggested that you take some neurocognitive <laughs> tests. Would you be willing to I, do that? You know, I, I am very sorry I got <laughs> pneumonia. I'm very glad that antibiotics took care of it and uh, that's behind us now. I am physically, mentally healthy and fit to be President of the United States. Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? The, the Jennifer Lee? Where's Jennifer? Where's Jennifer? The, the Jennifer Lee? Thank you all. Huma replied, it's very important to do that. She's often confused. Okay, 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 ready? You're right. Ready, get on here, and Daddy's gonna pick you up. Whoa! Whoa! And down. Like, was there a moment where you realized I have to lie about this, or was it? Oh, almost immediately. I was like, I gotta. I mean, yes. I wasn't. You know, yeah. I mean, if, so, I mean, yes. But yeah, I knew instantly it was. It was pretty bad. What was Huma's reaction when you told her? Her told her the truth. Told her what happened. Yeah. Told her the truth, or told her you know something's going down well, here. Walk me through it. So I don't remember. I I think that I mean there was a period of time that I mean I lied to her. I mean I lied to her too. I didn't like fess up to her and then lie to the world. I was tr the primary person I was trying to protect finding out about this was Huma. Pisha, no. And so I think I was hacked. I think you know whatever it is. I don't. I, don't, I mean the same stories I was telling. I was. It started out as my my telling her. Launching this campaign was not an easy decision for my family to make. People say a lot of things about my husband. Some nice, some not so nice. Putting yourself out there is hard. Our challenges, what we went through, is nothing compared to what so many families in this city face every day. One fights harder on behalf of people, and no one will make New York safer, stronger, and more secure than my husband. And <laughs> Well, I feel what people must have felt like <clears throat> seeing Charlie Chaplin in the talkies for the first time. Like, well, that's what she sounds like. <laughs> this is kind of our first. Get on the list, but I ultimately don't care what you think. I have that. never once criticized you for your texting. I think your photography is just perfectly a standard American photography that's floating around the internet now. I've never said anything about that. You just you believe that I should have done one once I have. No, no, Even if I think I'm the better candidate with the better ideas, no, don't run. No. As of this moment, I am here. I'm in this room and I'm in this campaign. Okay. And we can continue this conversation. Okay, well, you guys should talk to right here. The two of you. What are you, the referee over there? Okay. No, I'm just saying. I mean, okay, cool, it's cool. a minute. He's like family. No, I know, but I just wanted to see if there might be things that other people might want to say, like, yeah, I'm, I'm there too. And... I, mean, I feel, um, and I think some of us have been frustrated with feeling like we're left in the dark, not even about, you know, the actual situation, but more like how it's being <laughs> My whole team, Barbara's team, like, they really want an apology. Right. But that, that was well, what I understand. I would like to flag for everybody that stuff like this, people are reporting back to the New York Post, and it becomes something where I'm walking down the street and getting berated by a New York Post reporter. Well, look. It's it, fact, it, guys, it's it a was sign. perfect to watch today, the way they were treating me in the street. Yeah, we're walking through, and they were like badgering her, and they're like, if you don't answer our question, we're going to write that you're having an affair. And it was bad. Just a quick optics thing. Just stop us really leaving as soon as photographers are still outside. So, you will look happy? Yes. You will look happy? Yes. You will look happy? Yes. It's a I'm saying this for you. No, no, no I don't want to be. The press secretary walked out very upset at 6.30. I, 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 I can't get through to them. Like, no. Can you play Hogan back in, please? And then close the door and stand there beside her for a while. I just, I don't mean disrespectful, but please leave me alone for a while. Do you know the time you're going to do this? No. I don't. Not at all? I mean, mm -hmm. since we were talking about that.
not separating. So where are you on the statement? I, I, I can't get through to them on the telephone. We keep getting interrupted. They think that this is not going to work. They think this is whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm like very anxious about you and I being apart today. Someone's going to find you. Yeah. Is someone on the phone? Can you be Okay, Anthony's just trying to get you on. Okay. All right. Well, you're you're saying that the, the timeline is the problem. Uh, yeah. By the way, we're going to launch this. Okay, so go ahead. Obviously, look, this is a continuum of challenges in our marriage that ended at a certain point, and we decided to move forward with our lives, and that's that. that was a problem, and that's behind us. And as we said, other things would come out. <laughs> no. We're getting obviously, we're getting deluged. My head is at try to sell this as something that people already know. Hello? You guys still there? It's great to be out here. I said I would. anything about what he's talking about and uh, I don't recall any joke um, it would have been a joke if it uh, had been said but I don't recall that where's Jennifer where's Jennifer did, did Jennifer leave he's a neurosurgeon he's a neurosurgeon <laughs> 